Uh, in this example, we have two non-intersecting circles, C1, containing points M, S, and C2, containing points N and R. They have centers at P and Q, all right, where PQ is 50. So this length in here is 50. Uh, the line segment MN and SR are common tangents to the circles. That's important. That means that these angles here, tangents to circles, meet at 90 degrees from your circle theorems. Uh, the size of the reflex angle, reflex between 180 and 360, is alpha. And the size of the obtuse angle between 90 and 180 is beta over here. The size of the angle MPQ, MPQ is um, alpha. So the arc length MS is L1 and the arc length NR is L2. The information is represented in the diagram below. Um, this line here comes into play for the next uh, part, so it's, it's not in the question, but we'll talk about that in a second. The radius of C1 is X, so this whole length here is X. Uh, where x is greater than or equal to 10. The radius of C2 is 10. So this length here to here is 10. All right, from Q to R. Explain why x needs to be less than 40. Well, that comes from the fact that they are non-intersecting circles. So because C1 and C2 are non-intersecting. All right, since this is 50 and this is 10, right? If this radius here was more than 40, then the circles would touch. And actually, even if it was equal to 40, hence the only the less than. All right, I'll keep coming back to this diagram. We are going to show that cos of theta uh, oh, theta, that's right, is x minus 10 over 50. Well, there's a few hints in the question here. This is x, and this is 10. So if we can find a way to match those up, so uh, draw in here a t, all right? So that means that this I've constructed parallel to mn. So parallel to mn from t out to q, if they're parallel, this is a transversal, right? That means that these two add to 90, that means that this one's 90, and that means that this one over here is also 90. This is 50, it becomes the hypotenuse because we created t to q, all right? And this here is my uh, angle theta. Now the tricky bit here is to recognize that this must be x minus 10, all right? Because this whole thing here is x, this is 10 because they're radiuses of the circles C1 and C2. Now it's easy to see that since you have this right triangle, the cosine of theta is the adjacent side x minus 10 over 50. All right. So show that. Um, yeah, I, I guess you would need the, the diagram, right? So or some explanation of how you've done that. Then we're going to have a look here at an expression for mn in terms of x. So we want to find mn, which is the same as we've constructed here from t to q, in terms of x. So if we have this length, that's the hypotenuse. It's simple right angle triangle, and we end up with an x minus 10 as one of the shorter sides, and we want q to t, which is the same as m to n. We just use Pythagoras. So, mn squared is 50 squared minus x minus 10 squared. All right. So that means that the length mn is going to be the square root of 50 squared minus x minus 10 squared. All right. So, um, that's our expression. Next, we're asked to find the value that maximizes. Now, looking carefully, here, we're subtracting something. Anytime you square, you're going to get a positive. So any value of x 
will make this bit bigger, which we're subtracting. It, the smallest thing that can happen over here is, of course, when x equals 10, right? Because when x equals 10, this side will be as big as possible. Taking the square root, something, subtract something. Subtracting zero is the, the smallest thing in this instance that you can subtract because we don't have negatives. So obviously x is equal to 10. Two marks, just have to notice that. You could of course graph and find it, but that's not a good use of time here. All right, now it gets a little bit uh, challenging to think here about alpha and beta, okay? So we're looking first at alpha. And we want an expression in terms of x for that. So let's go back to our diagram. So we want this in terms of x, all right? Well, mm, here, this angle, right, is going to be this whole angle minus 2 thetas. And since we now have an expression here for theta that you can tease out by using our cos of both sides, we can hence get it. So alpha is 2 pi minus 2 theta, all right, again, back to the diagram. If you take away these two thetas, then 2 pi minus that gives the alpha here, all right? And now we're going to use this to find theta. So when we subtract two thetas, we want, the question says in terms of x, so you want to arc cos both sides, or or inverse cos, okay. So now you have 2 pi minus 2 arc cos or inverse cos of our expression that we previously found here, all right? That was given here, x minus 10 over 50. Sorry, dumb mistake. x minus 10 over 50. Okay. So an expression in terms of x, we've got rid of the theta, Right? This is a number, this is an expression in terms of x, so therefore we could piece it all together. Well, actually, there's no need to factor that out, that's fine. All right, let's go back to the diagram, have a look at how we're gonna find beta. All right, so beta is over here. Now, we've got some interesting things happening. This is M, P, Q, N is a quadrilateral. These angles are 90, so this angle, and this angle, um, theta here, those need to add up to 180 or pi, right? Same goes on this side. So that means this angle, this angle, theta and theta, all of those need to add up to two pi because those are 90 and those are 90, or shall I say pi over two. So these four blue right angles add up to two pi. These ones on the inside add up to two pi. So if you take the whole 2 pi, you subtract the 2 theta, you're going to end up with beta here. All right? So that tells us that this is simply 2 alphas because it comes from the fact that it's 2 pi minus 2, sorry, minus alpha. So beta is 2 pi minus alpha. Good. Beta is 2 pi minus alpha, which is the same as 2 thetas. All right. So that is this part here. So 2 arc cos of x minus 10 over 50. Okay. So now you have expressions in terms of x for both alpha and beta. All right. So we've now got an expression for x for alpha and for beta, which will help us out. All right, in part E, we're asked to find the length of the perimeter of the whole thing, find an expression for this length in terms of x. So it's pretty messy, but it's, it's all gonna make sense from the things that we've done already. So we need this piece, we need this piece, we need this piece, and we need this piece. Now all the pieces we've already found, so all we have to do is piece it all together. All right. So L1 is going to be found by x alpha plus 10 
beta plus 2 of these. All right. Mm -hmm. Good. So in this instance, we could have a look at uh, piecing everything together. Alpha, we want an expression bx in terms of x, so we've got to bring in this alpha, which we found here, 2 pi minus 2 arc cos here. So let me see if I can grab that. Okay, so that came from before. All right, then we are going to add 10 beta. All right, and beta we also found before. So we can just take this, put it in. And finally, the last piece here can come down. So I'll just write that one out. 2 root 50 squared minus x minus 10 squared. Okay, so x times alpha, right, is just from the arc length formula, the radius times the, the angle, alpha being the angle, plus 10 beta because we know that the radius of the small circle was 10 and we found an expression for beta plus 2 and the expression for mn that gives us this piece this piece and both arc lengths all right so as we were saying we were looking at finding the maximum value of the length of the perimeter the expression for the perimeter we found so let's have a look here at uh, the maximum value. Not so obvious what's going on here. You've got this length changing, this length changing, and this length changing. Because you're on, uh, uh, you have a tool, that you have a calculator um, on, to work on this question. If you put it in your calculator and graph it, remember that your window needs to go from 0 to 40 because uh, that's the, the range that uh, works with the um, original part A. Then you can see it's continually growing so all we need to do is calculate the value oops calculate the value when x is 40 all right and you can see that is 270 to three significant figures 276 all right so 276 and the maximum value mm, not sure the units uh, have we stated units in this problem uh, no. So we can just say 276. Okay, and if you want, you can draw a little sketch that shows it going up very slightly. Um, that looks like it's a little bit the wrong way. Yeah, just very slightly. And then there, you can label this point 40, 276. All right, and in the last part of this problem, we're going to find the value of x that gives a perimeter of 200. Okay, this is quite simple. Again, if you're using your calculator effectively, then all we need to do is have a look at where this function meets 200. So you also graph 200, and then you simply find the intersection point, and you can see it's at 21.1, all right, to three significant figures. So 21.1, and again, just for your method, show this line, show where they meet, and then you could label that point there. Oh, that's awful. Let's try that again. So that point of intersection, 21.1, 200, and you could indicate your scale here, 200. Excellent.
I hope that was uh, not too difficult to follow. I kept flipping back and forth to the diagram, but without the diagram, it's uh, quite a complicated thing to, to understand. I think the key, the most important thing, was drawing this line. Um, when you have these uh, you know, these problems where there's some kind of diagram, it's always nice to mark it up a little bit and perhaps you need to uh, construct some line to, to make it work out nice. But once you draw that and you see this right triangle, it's all right angle trigonometry and Pythagoras um, with a little bit of graphing.